Okay, so Giffinet. <laughs> I won't explain what is a community network or a free network. I think all of you know Freyfunk is like the mother and the father of the community networks. And I will try to focus for these 20 minutes I have about what I think is the difference, the special thing about Giffinet in comparison with other community networks. So let's start. What is not Giffinet? Giffinet is not an internet service provider, it's not a Wi Fi network. It's not a geek hobbyist movement or a terrorist movement. Giffinet is none of these things. So, what is Giffinet? Giffinet, I like this uh, definition, is a col collaborative economy over networks held in common, where there are mainly three different kinds of actors users, companies, and a foundation. Uh, the project was actually started in 2003 in a rural area where there were many farms without internet access. The companies were not uh, bringing the internet there because the business model was not made for, for bringing the internet on that rural area. So what's going on? <laughs> Let's start, Barry. Um, so Giffinet is an open project, it's just a name, it's a logo where anyone can join it. And the most important thing, okay, Giffinet is a set of rules and agreements. So there is a license which is similar to the GPL for software that we call XOLN. It would be something to to be sure that the network is always free, open, and, net, uh, ne and neutral. So anyone who joins the network is accepting this license. Uh, and Giffinet is also an uh, organized IP network distribution. So there can be different uh, network clouds which are not connected, but as they are using uh, IPs, an IP system which is compatible, once they join with other Giffinet clouds, they will be compatible from the network uh, layer point of view. So what's, what technology is used in Giffinet? Is, uh, Giffinet is like a very huge network. Right now it has around 30,000 nodes, working nodes. So there are many, many different kind of small Giffinet networks in, inside the big Giffinet network. Mainly we use Wi-Fi technology because it's cheap for the last mile, but we also use optical fiber for the backbone. Uh, regarding the routing protocols, there is a main routing protocol which is BGP. It's the same routing protocol used in the internet which federates all the small clouds around the Giffinet network. Inside each cloud of Giffinet, there can be different routing protocols like OSPF or any kind of mesh routing protocol like uh, BMX6, OLSR, Batman Advance, or even static routing. It doesn't matter. The important thing here is that BGP is federating all these small islands. Yeah, that's the current network in 2017. Uh, as you see, the main focus of the network is in Catalonia, in, is the area where it was born. Now it ex is expanding to other regions of, of the Iberian Peninsula, like the Basque Country, uh, Asturias, or even Madrid, or Seville, Andalusia in the, in the south. And I would like to show you this growth map here. Uh, I have it. Uh, so here, 
that this is Barcelona over here. And that should work. Come on. Okay. <laughs> okay, now it's working. So it was started in the rural area. In this area, there are mainly farms and sheep and and coves and and gardening spaces. But now this area is the most well connected area of the whole Iberian Peninsula. We have the stats from Eurostat. <laughs> And this is over the years, so these long links, these long shots are not real Wi-Fi links. This is not all Wi-Fi. There are also uh, optical fiber links or maybe sometimes internet VPNs. But mainly it's physical in infrastructure. So we, Gifinet is not based on virtual infrastructure over the internet, but mainly uh, on a physical infrastructure. Okay, so what else? Uh, what GiphyNet provides, uh, once you connect to GiphyNet, you don't have access to the internet by default. There is no internet gateway. So each user must find a way to connect to the internet. There are different ways to connecting to the internet. For instance, you can hire a service to an intern ISP, or you can share the connection with other users which are connecting to the same network that you are. Or you can use a network of federated open proxies which are available for anyone but with restricted uh, access to the internet. So for instance, you can only access to the HTTP or HTTPS um, protocols. Um, yeah, in Gifinet, as it is a 30,000 users network, there is a business model. So there are many companies which are operating inside the network. These companies can offer things like uh, internet connection or they install nodes for the people who don't want to install their own node. So if you are just a user and you like the idea of being part of this free network movement, but you don't have the time or the knowledge, or, or you don't know, you don't, you don't want to, to, to make the effort to install your own technology. You can call to a professional that will make the this job for you. The important thing for the companies, the users, and everyone connected to the to this network is that they must respect always the license, which says that the network must be always open and free. So as you are using uh, parts of the network which are not yours, you must allow other people, third parties, to connect also to your nodes. So this way, even if the companies are installing nodes and the companies has private a uh, business model inside the network, we can be sure that they will always respect the, the basics of the free network uh, license and the free network movement. Uh, there is also the GIFINET Foundation, which is not the owner of the network. That's, that's an important point. The foundation is uh, like a legal entity to provide um, yeah, some legal services to have an ID so the users of the Giffinet network can access to, for instance, to a public IPv4 or IPv6 range uh, of the internet. So they can apply for, for funding also or they can participate in European research projects. So the foundation is respected by most of the users, but it is not the owner of the, of the network. That's an important point to take care of. The GIFINET Foundation also acts as a, a mediator. So sometimes in the network there are problems between companies or users or associations. The GIFINET Foundation is like uh, trying to mediate between, between these parts and always try to apply the license and 
and the commons uh, politics of the free network movement. Uh, what else? Ah, I think that's the last one. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, it was like a small talk. I just prepared it one hour before <laughs> coming here. And um, yeah, so I would like to maybe to open a discussion about the uh, differences between the Giffinet model and the Freifunk model because uh, I think we are like playing uh, the same, we are looking for the same objective but following different ways. And as far as I know, in Freifunk there is not any uh, like legal entity like the Giffinet Foundation. So here maybe the administration of the network is more like um, distributed. Uh, not legal in in Giffinet, it's more like legal. Like the Giffinet Foundation and the companies are like trying to 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 be like a legal entity of the country and follow the rules, but use these rules to to make something different, which is a common network infrastructure. So yeah, I don't know if there are questions regarding this model or some views you want to share uh, I would love to to participate <laughs> yeah hello Hello. Ah, um, I, th I, th I think it's interesting that you, in one of your slides, you say um, that uh, someone who gets connected to Guifinet is does not have um, internet access by default, because ideologically, Freifunk is, is similar, has a similar phrasing in that internet access is just one of the possible applications of the Freifunk network. But in practice, I think many people equate uh, Freifunk access with like uh, free and open Wi-Fi and, and internet access. So in your case, <coughs> are there, is there like heavy usage of Wi-Fi net as like an, uh, an intranet or is it also in practice mostly the case that people have internet access? Yeah, the main, the main focus of the users of Giffinet is to reach the internet access. That's a fact. I mean, the Giffinet Foundation and many associations or users inside the network are trying to push services to use inside the network, but at the end, the standard normal user is using the internet services like Gmail, like Google and Facebook and all this stuff. So, yeah, in this case, I think it's more or less the same. I think a difference would be because as far as I understand, or, or or in my experience in Giffinet, the thing is that to get internet access, normally you pay for that, or most people f pay for that. And so it's uh, saying that Giffinet doesn't give internet access is a way of allowing that. But I'm not sure about Freifunk. Like I connected to Funkfeuer, which is a very different network, but I also could get free internet access. I'm not sure about Freifunk in your community. Yeah. Yeah, so in, in Freifunk, I think all, all communities also provide access to the internet. I, I haven't heard of a, a Freifunk community that doesn't have this, but maybe there are, I don't know. Yeah. But my question is do you pay for that? Okay. Yeah, in Giffinet, it depends on the area. Some areas they have some free internet access but most of them you have to yeah to search it and maybe hire it to some company so yeah yeah would you say that more than half of the people to to have a safe estimate more than half of the people pay for internet access yeah would you say the same for freifunk more than half of the people that are connected to freifunk are paying for internet access? Um, well, I can only only speak a little bit for the Hamburg community, but I think the majority of people who run nodes also have um, internet uplink themselves. There's 
There is mesh clouds, but I don't know. <laughs> uh, so I guess there's not so much mesh uh, because it's worked not well in a, in a big city like Hamburg. So every uh, owner of a Freifunk node has also a provider uh, internet access, if, if that's your question. So, so you can have uh, internet over your Freifunk node or you can have internet over your ISP. So I, I would like to ask also to Freifunk people, how do you deal with the legal situation? I mean, are you allowed in Germany to share an internet connection? Do you have some responsibilities if you're sharing your internet connection? And how does it work here? Um, it changed uh, this year. Uh, we had a thing called Störerhaftung. You could be uh, liable for things others do with your internet access. And um, to uh, work around for this was to have uh, VPN servers and all the internet traffic was routed okay. uh, via VPN, uh, VPN. And um, now we have uh, this change in LAR and uh, we have to see, uh, see if... <laughs> and, and we have to see if uh, people uh, want to provide their own, uh, want to share their own internet access uh, without the fear of getting uh, letters from, from lawyers and so on. Okay. So, um, in theory, it's possible to share your internet access without any, uh, any fear, but uh, in practice, we have to practice a bit. Okay. In, uh, in Giffinet, it happened something. The, the companies, the ISPs like Telefonica or Vodafone and so on, sometimes they have a special statement on the contract that says that you cannot share your internet connection with any other than you. I don't know if this is also happening here. It's the same in Germany. Um, uh, we have the same things, uh, but uh, we never asked. Uh, and uh, there was, n I don't know any case where you got in trouble because you shared your internet connection. Okay. Because they can't, they can't know it uh, technically. Yeah. It would yeah, be yeah. impossible to show, or they uh, spy on your internet connection. Mm -hmm. That was the only way. What what we are doing in 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 Catalonia and Gifinet to avoid this problem is that the Giffinet Foundation is, is uh, registered as an ISP. And there is a more important law in Spain which says that when two ISPs are physically one next to the other, so they can connect, phys physically connect, they must connect and interchange the data between one network and the other. So uh, any Giffinet node is a it can be declared as a foundation Giffinet node. So it is a physical point when the ISP Giffinet Foundation is present. And if you have Telefonica, for instance, in the same place, then you are actually obligated to share the internet connection, so to connect the networks, to connect the Giffinet network with the private uh, Telefonica network in this case. So this is what we are using to avoid this 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 problem and it kind of works i don't know if in germany you could do the same Mate? <laughs> um one thing re regarding this paying for for internet access i think it's not i'm not sure if it was clear my uh, my my description of giving it in that most people inside Giffinet are not paying to Telefonica or some big e ISP for internet access, like in, I understand, in Freifunk. Like in Freifunk, every node owner, or almost every node owner, is paying to some other ISP and sharing that paid commercial connection with maybe someone else. Mm. But in Giffinet, it's like the self-owned network is carrying the traffic to one big um, connection, like four, four gigabit not, not connection. Not always. Yeah, but maybe half of it. Maybe. Like it, th there is four gigabits of traffic being uh, exchanged at the internet exchange point, and the people are paying to internal companies, like some very small personal ISPs. 
that are giving service to, to those people. And I think that that's that's the key thing about this collaborative economy. It's like the money is kept inside the community, kind of. It's, the, the money being paid to outside ISPs is very small in comparison to the money being moved inside the community. Like per month for, for that four gigabit connection, I think they paid like 3,000 euros or something like that. Maybe 4,000. Yeah, I don't have the numbers now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, at least a few years ago, it was like... Mm. Something like one this. euro per megabit, so like four thousand euro per month. But the money that cir circulates inside, like every end user is paying to some very local neighbor ISP, maybe ten or twenty euros per month, depending on the connection and everything. And that all that economy is kind of circular. About two weeks ago, we went to meet a cooperative, like a consumer cooperative. They, 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 they came together in order to organize their um, communication. And also they collaborate with Giphy about um, the internet um, um, connectivity, but also um, they're trying to um, work about uh, like um, Festnet, GCM and other um, Things. I wanted to ask if in, in Austria or in, in Germany you have any um, users, cooperatives for communication, if it exists, or like alternatives. Because like the idea is that the, that's this, it's like a fair alternative, like paying fair, lo uh, fair um, what's loan, fair wages to the people working in this model. I don't know if anything similar exists, like a users, uh, yeah, cooperatives. And the other question I was asking because you were saying, is there any um, internal services? Do you have any um, examples of Freifunk using um, like services that you don't need internet? Like you have any, like, yeah, I don't know if there are any experiences. Um, so, uh, unfortunately, I can't answer the first question because I don't know a lot of about the telecommunications market. For the second question, um, yes, um, there are some some internal services that are uh, only reachable on the Freifunk network because, uh, for example, they are using the internal um, IP addresses, and it's stuff like file sharing for example there was uh, a couple of years ago in one small village in in germany they uh, some people made a lot of like uh, video recordings and then used Freif the freifunk network to share um, the recordings inside the local area and and stuff like that but it's uh, it's not widely popular or anything uh, not not compared to the internet access <laughs> Yeah, uh, I found this interesting also to share with you. If I can, uh, come on. Oh, yeah, I like this because this is a. Uh, these are regions of Catalonia. And this is the average of internet connection for Spain. And this is the average of internet connection for Catalonia. And the one higher is the average for the European Union. So Spain is here. Eh? The European Union is there. Catalonia is in the middle. But this region of Catalonia, this is where Gifinet was born. Like this one in the middle of the territory. And you can see how it's even bigger than the average in the European Union. And the m most interesting thing is that the graphic is split between broadband access and internet access. So broadband is like you have good internet connection, but you can have internet access, but with a very few kilobytes. So here is the only where the broadband connection is hi higher than the internet access. <laughs> this is this uh, are stats from Eurostat, so probably they they don't know that the, there is a, a Giffinet project running on this region, 
so they they cannot account the internet access because many users are sharing the same internet access but many families many different places they have broadband <laughs> so <laughs> that's that's kind of fun this is from from 2013 it's quite old i think in four years it w would be even <laughs> bigger yeah but i think this can only be achieved at least in in in, uh, in in Europe by using a business model and a foundation model and a legal entity and so on this is why i think that's the main the key point of gifinet no for for this growth and this impact on the r real life of the people so yeah Can you say some examples of local um, applications on Griffey, like compared to Fryfunk? So I'm I'm based in Toronto, and it, the, in the United States, in New York and Detroit, I know of some local applications that are like really tailored to a specific community. So one is a when is this next bus arriving, which is a key bus to get out of the neighborhood. Um, or another one uh, in Detroit, they've done some stuff around uh, like a, an internet radio and it's tied to a, a high school youth program where they uh, learn to um, kind of like uh, mix music or like learn other media development skills. Um, and I think those ones have been, from like talking to people there, relatively successful, but I'd love to hear uh, your examples. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> of local <laughs> examples. No, I mean, um, for Bo IP, for voice over IP, there is quite a lot. Uh, and there are some professional, like some providers which are using Bo IP phones to connect the users so users can call. But yeah, I mean, everything is on the internet nowadays. I mean, the people use internet for everything, so. That's a pity, but I don't really have a good example of a local service. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Uh, unfortunately, the time is over now, and um, we are waiting for our next guest, uh, Toilets in the Air, so the next talk. Thank you.